Now for the steps for identifying vertical asymptotes of rational functions, if we're just given a formula. The vertical asymptotes are the values that make the denominator of the rational function equal to zero after it is in its lowest terms. So what do we mean by that? So that means that we've gone through and we've factored the numerator and factored the denominator and canceled out any like factors. So we've simplified this function as much as we can. So again, that's the key thing. Vertical asymptotes are found after you've simplified the rational function. So for each function below, identify the vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes are the values that make the denominator equal to zero after we've simplified it. So I look at, for letter A, look at the numerator. 3x plus 5 cannot be simplified any further, and neither can x minus 6. There's nothing that we can cancel out. There's nothing we can simplify to make this any further. So we just have to look now at the denominator. That's going to equal 0 when x is 6. So that means that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 6. Again, make sure that you're writing this as an equation of a line. For letter B, to find the vertical asymptotes, simplify the rational function, then find when the denominator equals 0. So if I factor the numerator, that factors into x plus 1 times x plus 5, the denominator. So I know I have 2x here and x here. So I've got to have my plus 5 here and my plus 1 here to make that um, so I can get that 7 in the middle, because this will give me 2x plus 5x is that 7x. OK, so now I see, can I cancel anything? Well, I can cancel an x plus 1 from the numerator and the denominator. So this gives me x plus 5 over 2x plus 5. So that's what this function is in simplified form. So now that I have it in its lowest terms, now I can find that vertical asymptote. So that vertical asymptote happens when the denominator equals 0. So that's going to be when x equals negative 5 halves. So my vertical asymptote is x equals negative 5 halves. For letter C, we'll first simplify this. Okay, so the first, the numerator is the difference of perfect squares. This is x squared squared, and this is 4 squared. So this will give me x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 4 all over. I can factor an x out of the denominator, and I get x minus 2. Now I can continue going because this term right here on the numerator is also the difference of two perfect squares. So I can keep on going. x squared minus 4 factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2. And x squared plus 4 is still x squared plus 4. That doesn't factor any further. And that's all over x times x minus 2. Now I see that I can cancel x minus 2's out. And that leaves me with x plus 2 times x squared plus 4 all over x. Now I've finally gotten my formula into its lowest terms. So now I can look at this and see, OK, this is going to have a vertical asymptote when that denominator equals 0, which happens just at x equals 0. If we want to go back through and just review finding horizontal asymptotes, let's just do that for A, B, and C just to make sure we've got that down pat. So for horizontal asymptotes, you look at the degree on the numerator and denominator. At letter A, we can see the degree is 1. The degree on the denominator is also 1. So that horizontal asymptote is going to be found by dividing the leading term in the numerator by the denominator which gives me y equals 3. 
for letter B, the degree on top is 2, the degree on bottom is also 2. So again, to find that horizontal asymptote, it's going to be to dividing the leading term on top divided by the leading term on bottom. So that leaves me with 1 half. Letter C, the degree on top is 4, the degree on bottom is 2. So the degree on top is greater than the degree on bottom, so there's no horizontal asymptote.